Welcome back to Relentless Guys. We are here on location. We're in a different location for this interview. I had to do it in person, so I came to New Jersey. Dirty Jersey. <laughs> Dirty Jersey, just to interview a very good friend of mine, mentor, teacher, um, and now help with my daughter. So you're joining in at Relentless. If you're listening on the podcast or watching on YouTube, um, you will be finding information as usual that's going to help you on your journey as you become stronger in your mental, physical, and emotional sections of life. So I had, thing. yeah, that's it's a good, a good thing. thing, right? Because it, yeah. it takes all of it, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I have with me here Dr. Perry Nicholson. And before we get into, I could probably do an eight hour <laughs> podcast with you. I think we could. Yeah, we could do that. Fun. Yes, but we don't have that much time. Before we get into some of the questions, tell everyone who you are, what your background and training is, so they can get a little idea that you're an expert in the industry. Sure. Well, first of all, it's really great to see you again. Yes. And we first met at a was a rock tape. Somewhere it was in, in Charlotte. You came to Charlotte. I know. Yeah. I did. I used to live in Charlotte too yeah. for a while. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it was a. It was a fun workshop and uh, yeah, to have you come on up and just got to take care of your, your daughter. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's see, it's been an interesting journey. Um, my profession that I have to call myself is right. a chiropractor, <laughs> Yes. but uh, honestly, that's not really a lot of what I do anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, that has allowed me to get into healthcare and explore many different ways mm -hmm. to help people feel better and help their quality of life. So uh, people usually find me because of the work I do now with looking at human movement. And I just started branching out from just taking care of the spine or bones of the body, mm -hmm. you know, which chiropractors do, right? To, to really look at the whole system of the human being mm -hmm. from the emotional side to the, of course, the physical side mm -hmm. and really taking a look at, I was very curious, honestly, about you know, why when we get pain, it comes back. I mean, what's up with that? Yeah. Even though we do a lot of wonderful things that really work mm -hmm. to help people get out of pain, but it still comes back. Right. right? Or the one that is really fascinating for me is why when we do all the stuff that's supposed to work that we still have pain mm -hmm. that like lit up my brain yeah. to try to figure out why mm -hmm. and my journey honestly was because of my own experience right. i think a lot of people change their direction in life or the way they look at the world when you have some type of suffering so, yes because it doesn't mean as much when it's not you yeah when it's not one of your children you like people that haven't been through painful situations or a sickness of some sort, they, they hear these things. They hear people talk about functional medicine or mm -hmm. functional movement and they think, Oh, that sounds great. But when you're in the moment and you have that pain or that sickness, you are willing to do anything necessary to get an answer to help yourself. I think that's what you've explored over your lifetime is mm -hmm. okay. This is, information on the surface level is great. Like chiropractic's great. These other modalities are great, but when it's not working or if it doesn't do anything, where do you go then? Yeah. And some of my followers that I have with the podcast and everything that I asked them what they would like for me to ask you. Oh, and okay. so, yeah. Oh, this so should be fun. Exactly. So a couple <laughs> questions from them. Uh. Some of them I know personally, they're hurting right now. Mm. They've been, and I know you get this all the time. I've been to the chiropractor. I've been to this doctor. I've been to that doctor. Yeah. What they did worked for a little bit or did nothing. And I get a lot of clients from chiropractors, PTs, other modalities, and they basically have relegated them to, well, there's, after their treatment pro protocol, which is a problem, mm -hmm. they say, well, just go try to be comfortable. Go let her try to just help you feel good at least. Yeah. And they get the most benefit from working with me because I see the body as a whole. Right. So one of the questions that I got that you'll love mm -hmm. is what is pain? Uh, and you actually had a great statement. We were talking early on what earlier on what pain was. Do you remember what you said? Yeah, I got a couple of ways <laughs> to look at pain. I think what I said for you in here is, you know, how you view pain is important. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, pain from your body is not a punishment. Right. 
even though it feels that way. Mm -hmm. And you actually start to have this like hate, hate relationship with your body. You're right. Like, Why are you doing this to me? Yes. So it's like a confrontational one. Mm -hmm. And that's very stressful, which yes. actually makes pain a little worse. Right. But pain is protective. Mm -hmm. uh, your, your body is trying to send you a signal to say, hey, listen, something's up. I'm not really happy. I'm feeling vulnerable. I right. love the word vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And the only way it can communicate with you is to send you pain. We don't always understand the message. Right. Because unfortunately, pain doesn't tell you a whole hell of a lot about what the actual problem is. Right. <laughs> so, the, so the body um, gets very creative in, in a way. And it takes a lot for your body to cry out like that because right. it's designed to actually compensate and adapt to stress. Right. You need stress and you need pain and you need inflammation because that's what life is, mm -hmm. right? I mean, mm -hmm. if you didn't experience that, you couldn't feel anything. There is a condition that people have where they don't feel pain. Yeah. And they die. Exactly. Really yeah, that's the input. Right. I mean, uh, it, but you're supposed to get rid of it. Right. That's the right. thing. But I look at the, it a different way. When I've been in chronic pain for many years, like I was, and I had an autoimmune disorder as well that I'm continually dealing with. I started to change how I talk to myself because words matter. Words are powerful. Yes. I mean, like you can see how you can change a person's life just with a kind gesture or mm -hmm. word or you can destroy it. Right. With one. Yes. And that is true power. Mm -hmm. So the way I look at it now is I tell people pain is actually a hug from your body. Yes. It's giving you a hug. Sometimes the hug is way too tight. Right. <laughs> Sometimes it's way too creepily long. <laughs> But it's it's when I so when I see the pain is harder, it's yeah. it's tighter yeah. from there. Um, and I also look at pain as this: pain is a request mm -hmm. for change. And if you think about that, right, a request from whom, mm -hmm. right? Well, you mm -hmm. from from your brain and your body, and it's a request. But we don't always. Listen, or we just say, maybe it'll go away. Right. Kind of thing. Or we suppress it. Yeah, because a lot of pain is tied to emotional trauma and emotional stress. Because when you have a lot of stress in your life from that emotional point, there's a reason you're not a rock or a tree. You know, <laughs> you, you respond to the world. Right. And you hold that tension and you suppress it and you push it down and it builds up. But eventually, I tell people it's like taking a glass. The glass has a capacity of water. Mm-hmm. And, but eventually you get to the top right? and it only takes one small little tiny drop <laughs> right. to send it over the yeah. edge. And that's what chronic pain is like or right. autoimmune where you've filled up the glass mm -hmm. for decades right? and then you have something that happens that seems so trivial or inconsequential. Right. Like all I did was sneeze or all I did was bend over to tie my shoe. Mm -hmm. And I tell people that was the final drop. Right. That's all it was, yes. that, that you hit that breaking yes. point. And it can be really frustrating, honestly, when you have that pain and you go to get traditional care um, and it doesn't work mm -hmm. and like it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. First of all, you got to make sure you're actually treating the right thing. Right. Because the name of my company is Stop Chasing Pain. You right. treat pain, but you have to look at the whole individual. Yes. Because you might just be in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. And the body's really smart. Like, if you give the body what it likes, it will know, it will let you know quick, fast, and in a hurry, you got it right. Because mm -hmm. I feel better. Right. If it doesn't stick or doesn't last or have to do the same thing over and over and over, then the body's trying to tell you a nice try, but you're not even close. Right. You know, you need to branch out and not say you need to give it a little more time. And that's assuming, honestly, that sometimes when clients leave, they're not doing something that they don't know that they're doing that can make their issue worse. Like you yeah. don't know what you don't know. Exactly. And it's something that seems like, uh, how could that really be causing an issue? Right. And it was one of my favorite sayings that you cannot get well in the same environment you became ill within. Very and you really good, need yeah. to take that in. You cannot get well in the same environment that you became ill within, which means something has to happen and something has to change in your life. They request for change, not just the type of therapy that you're doing, right. but when you go home, maybe it's uh, how you're sleeping. 
maybe it's the way that you're moving, mm -hmm. or maybe it's actually a toxic relationship in your life that you need to just kick somebody to the curb yes. quick, fast, and in a hurry. And yeah. I tell people, you better look in the mirror because sometimes a toxic relationship you have is with yourself. Yeah. Your worst enemies in here. Yeah. Sometimes. It's like we don't have enough of this uh, self love. And when you're in pain mm -hmm. or you have a chronic illness, it's very easy not to love yourself. Right. But when I studied emotion and I study how, how you think, it's been shown to change your biology. It mm -hmm. physiologically changes your biology. And that's easy to experience when you're home alone. You can think to an event in your life where you just had happiness and you had joy and love. Maybe it's somebody that you think about that's in your life now or has passed on. You change. Mm -hmm. Like you sit different. Mm -hmm. You feel different. And then in an instant, you can think of something toxic right. in your life. Mm -hmm. And it'll flip a switch. And the next thing you know, your heart beats faster. You start to sweat. You start to blink more. You're just like, man, I just don't, I don't feel good. Right. Right. That's that positive, that slash negative energy. And it actually physiologically makes you stronger or weaker based on your thought process. Mm -hmm. I see it in athletes all the time. Like how you think makes a difference on if you're powerful mm -hmm. or if you draw in right. like that. And I tell everybody when I work with them, why in the world? Would you ever give any other human being on this planet that much power over your body? Exactly. Of, of how somebody treats you. Right. It's how you react to that situation. Mm -hmm. Actually, I like to use the word respond mm -hmm. because initially you're going to react the way the body is because when it's under threat mm -hmm. and something's coming at it, that's its reaction. Mm -hmm. It has to do that because otherwise if it didn't do that, you'd be dead. Right. Like, you know, you only got one shot to get it wrong yeah. and you're dead. And what, when I studied the brain, I found it very interesting. You are hardwired to think negative. And so it's not your fault. Protection. Yeah, you have to think negative because if your brain, if you're out, like I, I give an example, like if we're out in primal time, because our brains have changed very little since then, mm -hmm. um, and you're walking along the bush and you hear something rustling in there, Mm -hmm. You got two choices. I can think negative that that's a tiger that wants to eat me for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> or I can think positive. Oh, it's probably a little cute bunny rabbit or my friend <laughs> messing around in there. Yeah. And if you get it wrong, you're dead. <laughs> right. So your brain automatically says, let's just err on the side of bad. Right. We can worry about it later. Right. But we get stuck into that in exactly. everyday life. Yes. Over and over and over. So one, you're hardwired for negative. When you know that, that knowledge can become empowering that, hey, you know, I have this thing called free will. I can actually make a choice. Yes. That's not easy. Mm -hmm. It takes practice. Mm -hmm. But when you feel it enough of how your physiology changes based on how you think, mm -hmm. uh, it becomes very empowering to know that, oh, my goodness, I can really have an effect on how I feel. You don't feel like a quote unquote victim mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. And that's very empowering. One of the things that can help people in pain is knowledge mm -hmm. and learning to an extent, because right. I have to tell people this. I mean, the last thing you ever do when you have like a pain is go on Google. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, you got knee pain and the next thing you know, you're spidered off and you got Ebola. Like <laughs> you, you got to be careful yeah. from here because it can go really bad. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's just as the simple as it is. The proper information, the proper knowledge. And, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And that leads me, you were talking about earlier, make sure you're treating the right thing. That leads me to one of the other questions is, you know, people will go to practitioners talking about modern medicine mm -hmm. and the handicaps that it presents because of how that machine has to work. Right. And the problems with how a practitioner looks at you is a laser scope to one area of the body and talk about how it's different with functional medicine or functional movement or what you do, why your outcomes are different and usually better than the practitioners that just look at one area. Yeah, that's a great question. And I first want to preface it to say that, you know, modern medicine is amazing, right? Yes. I mean, it's why we don't have a lot of the awful diseases that eradicated mm -hmm. many people. Mm 
Um, and, you know, we have the best trauma, mm -hmm. you know, recovery that you've ever had. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're good at. Yes. You know, like if your arm's hanging off, you're not going to come <laughs> see me for a functional movement screen. Right. right? And you're you know, not a miracle worker. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were. I'm uh, disappointed. My laser can't help you for that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, they have their time and their place, but yes. a lot of the things that afflict us today are what we call lifestyle diseases. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff that's the chronic pain is a lifestyle disease. Right. That's not a, usually it doesn't happen from a traumatic onset. Right. Um, but all these other conditions that are getting us like uh, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, you know, uh, autism, mm -hmm. all those sorts of things. It's just, the body's just onslaught of right. stuff coming at you. And medicine is trying to treat the lifestyle diseases like they did infectious diseases. They're looking for one dude to blame. Right. Like, yes. this is the guy. Let me give you a pill for it and you're good. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to happen with this one because all these diseases are a product of our environment. Mm -hmm. And it takes decades for these things to come up. Right. And the other problem that happens in medicine is that there's so much specialty in, in medicine. Mm -hmm. Like... You know, if, if I've got like, uh, let's say I've got a heart problem, go to my heart guy. But my heart guy doesn't speak to my kidney guy. Right. And the kidneys work directly with the heart. Or the, the guy who treats my uh, intestines mm -hmm. you know, doesn't communicate with the other guy. Right. And your body's like, hey, guy, first of all, you know, these organs, I didn't name these things. You yes. did. <laughs> like, I don't even know what the hell a heart is. Your body's like, I'm just me. I'm right. just, I'm one me. Yes. And the, the parts that's missing in medicine is that it's not, it's not about a system. Mm -hmm. Like I tell people, there's not one system that's more important than the other, mm -hmm. right? They all have to work together. Yeah. It's the relationships, the interactions between the systems is where you find the answer. Mm -hmm. And interactions are how your body has had to adapt mm -hmm. to your environment your whole life. A lot of times you find your answer to these things 20 years prior. That's what functional medicine means. Mm -hmm. That My body's had to adapt to all these stressors to survive. Doesn't necessarily mean it's bad or I'm going to get an issue, mm -hmm. but it's important. And a lot of things we overlook because it happened in the past. It's right. nothing really relevant to what mm -hmm. I'm going to do here. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if you just look at, okay, this system is not working well, it's either down or up, I've got a pill to make it up. And then if it usually goes up, then I give you a pill to make it go down. And then I'm like, well, how the hell does this system react to the other system running right. along next to it? Right. And for me as a chiropractor, I was chasing the musculoskeletal system slash nervous system. Mm -hmm. That is um, your spine, mm -hmm. then your spinal cord, mm -hmm. and then your muscles. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a lot of other systems, right. too. I mean, you've got your vascular system, mm -hmm. which is your blood flow. You've got your internal organ system. You've also got your endocrine system, how hormones are affecting things, mm -hmm. right? Not to mention your lymphatic system that mm -hmm. we talked about this weekend. That one has to dictate how all the other ones work. Right. And very often what I find is, is that people are going after the wrong system. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. And until you realize that you have to look at them all. Like when you come in to see me, I look at you from a holistic standpoint. Like I'm going to take a look at your pain mm -hmm. for sure. Right. But I'm also kind of tongue in cheek. Like, okay, so I know you got knee pain, right? Mm -hmm. And I know that hopefully by the time you see me, they've done an x-ray, they've done an MRI. They usually have to rule out that you don't have cancer in right. your knee. Or something really serious where you got to have surgery. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you do, right? right? Yeah. If all those, what they call red flags, mm -hmm. are ruled out and you've had physical therapy, you've had chiropractic, you've had injections, stuff like this. I'm going to say to myself, well, it's probably not your knee. I'm going to take a long shot mm -hmm. here. And the last thing I'm going to do is what everybody else has done. Exactly. Because <laughs> if you needed that. You wouldn't be standing in here asking me for help. Right. You know, and I, you know, my laser machine is no better than somebody else's laser machine. Right. Or my massage is that different. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is look and say, okay, well, first of all, I'm going to kind of stay within the same system and know, well, maybe the knee hurts because I got a problem with my ankle or my hip mm -hmm. above and below. Mm -hmm. Or then I go even more crazy. Maybe it's the other leg that's a problem mm -hmm. because 
the, the body will overuse one side to try to protect another side. Mm -hmm. And then the protector side is the painful side, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I'll go switch to the other side, which is some people that think is nuts. Yeah. Right? And then I'll go from there, if we'll use a knee analogy, is that, well, I know when I walk, my knee has to connect to how my arms move. I'm going to go check up in my arms. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go even deeper into my experience with Eastern medicine, which is kind of the Chinese route, mm -hmm. to say that the knee always relates to organ, usually kidney. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people that have uh, kidneys that are not filtering well. They're in a perpetual state of dehydration. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of ammonia in their system because their lymph and their gut are destroyed mm -hmm. from this, the toxins that we have, mm -hmm. the stress in life. And then I just go up and I can look at the signs that the body is always showing to you mm -hmm. through the skin, or through the eyes, or through your mood, or, or through touch. And then I'm just going to try to clean that system up. And then usually what happens is the knee automatically starts to feel like a little bit better. Yeah. Or the most common cause of pain in the knee is where you have swelling in your lymph system behind your knee mm -hmm. and it, your body's trying to heal your knee yeah? yeah and but when it heals it it's got to get the waste from the tissue destruction out right so it can heal that cell mm -hmm. but people forget you have to heal the cell but you also have to make new ones right and that takes energy mm -hmm. to do that and if you can't get rid of what we call metabolic waste from there then your brain says, well, dude, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I can't make anything more because you can't get rid of stuff. Right. And then all you got to do is once you clear that out and you you move your knee and you're like, I, what? <laughs> like, and the, People get really upset because then they say to themselves, I don't understand why somebody else didn't look at it that right. way. And that's what I'm trying to do is, one, to get back to that we understand that the body is a whole. Mm -hmm. That it's interconnected, but I think we give it a lot of lip service right. from there because yeah. what happens is it's you kind of see things through your own lens, mm -hmm. right? And then you got to be careful when you go that way because it's it's the classic, dude. If I got a hammer, I'll fix everything because everything's a nail, <laughs> right. right? And it's the same thing when somebody comes in here. I'll find it correlate to that. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest learning experiences for me, and what I love the most, is. If I see something that the body's, because I'm trying to figure out what is this person's body trying to tell me. Mm -hmm. I take myself out of the picture and I'm going to do a treatment best based on what I think the body says. And sometimes it's thrilling when I do it and then it doesn't work or I don't get the response. Mm -hmm. Right. Then what I do is that really forces me to think. Mm -hmm. And I love that because I'm like, we got to figure this out. And most of the time, it's where I have to dig deeper into a history or what something has gone through. Mm -hmm. And because it's usually something inconsequential. They think, right? yeah, which, which is one of the hiccups in the standard of care. A lot of people are putting themselves through the practitioners if they, they don't see outside of the realm of the one thing they're looking at. Which right. could be why they're missing the part that's going to truly provide someone with the healing. Because one of the other questions that I have was with the technology that we have and with the medicine being so much more progressive, like you were mm -hmm. talking about, why is our society sicker and in more pain, it seems like. Yeah. And it's because of that view of we're so specialized into our area, we don't look at the rest of the body. Mm. Whereas you and functional medicine and functional movement, all those different modalities and just a more holistic view of the body, whole view, we start to take into account everything. And that's what people get frustrated with out in modern medicine. Yeah. And because they're getting those things missed. And how, what do you say about that with, you know, we have more information, we have more tools now, mm. but we're sicker and we're in more pain. Yeah. That's an interesting question. Well, Here's the thing about information. Information is inherently meaningless, mm -hmm. which means uh, you have to put it in context based on your own assumptions because your own assumptions skew information. Right. 
because you'll look at one thing and see a completely different I'm going to look at it. So it's not the information's fault. Right. It's how we approach it. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's also based on your past. Your past will always influence mm-hmm. that. Right. Mm-hmm. So we need to take that into account. That's why the answer is this. You have to go back. And you can't deal with information. You can't deal with a diagnosis because a diagnosis doesn't tell you squat. Right. Like, okay, you have this. I'm like, okay, well, first of all, why the hell did I get it? And second of all, when you tell me that, all of a sudden I manifest everything on it because I become that diagnosis. Right. Right. So it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy that you have. But I also tell people is that, let's say, for instance, I give somebody like... um, um, autoimmune disorder that they've got, like Crohn's disease. Mm-hmm. I can't treat your Crohn's like I treat his Crohn's. Exactly. It's not the same Crohn's. Right. Like I can't give you A and give you A. I'm mm-hmm. not going to have the same response because you're a different human being, completely different body. You know, you may look at, oh, you kind of got the same parts, right? But <laughs> yeah. not yeah. because the parts respond based on their history. Right. So I have to go back and ask and all these questions and Look at when you go into the doctor's office and you fill out this history of the past. Mm-hmm. You know, how how was your vascular, gastrointestinal, all these things, mm-hmm. family. This is the time, I'll be honest with you, in the past, I would just kind of like, well, that's not my area. I'm just going to go to your back or your <laughs> right, knee. Right. Now I really look there, yeah. especially when I do functional medicine, because it could be a different cause of your Crohn's than his. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're struggling in medicine today. For instance, if I go back in somebody's history and I see they've had an Epstein-Barr virus in their past, that's it. Like, when they're like, but that was 25 years ago. Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. But that's the catalyst Mm and your body's having to deal with that stressor Mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And then I look back in your past and you don't have any Epstein-Barr virus going on there. So it could be something else. But I I need to see that where it gets um, patient specific Mm -hmm. based on the diagnosis. And that's where medicine, I think, fails absolutely miserably in that regard. Like, you know, if I'm a surgeon and I got a knee in front of me, well, I'm going to do a knee because it's just like this dude's knee and you're out on the table. I got to do my thing. Right. But if I'm trying to treat like an autoimmune disorder, Mm -hmm. I can't just blanket give everybody the same thing. Protocol. It's like closing your eyes and throwing it, saying, you know, you don't worry, you'll hit somewhere on the board and at least you're aiming right. at the board. Right. No. Yeah. It's completely different. And that was my experience where I was doing everything that I was told could be beneficial for my issue. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude, I'm not getting any better. I'm mm-hmm. getting worse. And then come to find out, the more I learned and talked to other people, they're like, well, you're doing the, you're not supposed to be doing that. It's the exact opposite of what you're going to be supposed to be doing. I'm like, I don't understand. What do you mean? It's said that that's good for a gut problem. Right. And my friend said, yeah, but it's not good for your gut. I'm like, bingo, things went <laughs> off, right? Yeah. Same thing for a back. Yeah. Like, you know, I can't treat your back the same as uh, his back. Like when your daughter came on and you can see the type of exam I'm going to do in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going to find different things that show up. Right. So there's no way I can say, okay, this exercise, I'll pull this sheet out. And there's research to say that this exercise is good for your back. I don't care about that research at all. Mm-hmm. Zero. Mm-hmm. Because my patient wasn't in your study last right. time I checked. Right. Doesn't mean it's going to work for them. Yeah. Uh, I'll try it mm-hmm. if I think it's relevant. But if they do it and it doesn't help, it's out the window. Yeah. Absolutely. So when we're talking about specific things like getting a virus or getting, you know, that one specific thing we can see in black and white, that's one thing. But another person had a question because they know they don't have any things, but that they remember. Well, yeah, and they've had. Or they don't think is relevant. When we when we have that situation, her question is what she's come to find now is the stress of life. Oh yeah. The situations of life. You know, how she's like. How can just stress equal pain. Mm. So talk about the systems that take like a conversation oh, sure. or a situation, not a disease, not a virus, basically just life. life, right? Yeah. yeah. How, how in the world yeah. can that type of thing 
create pain and create these conditions that we have. This would be an eight hour podcast. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but just a little bit with someone that's new to this and, and new to understanding, it's not always black and white. It's not no. always a diagnosis you can run a test for or take this right. blood test. And here you go. This is your answer for a diagnosis. I very rarely make a blanket absolute statement, but here it comes. Okay. Stress is the biggest killer. The biggest uh, effector of your health, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. And we're all under it. Right. Right. Because like I said, with pain, pain is not bad. Mm -hmm. You need pain. Stress is not bad either. You need stress. If you didn't have stress, you couldn't adapt. You couldn't go stronger. Mm -hmm. You couldn't change. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the stress when it becomes overwhelming is when you can no longer adapt to it. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. And then that, that goes back into that primal response that I said before. When you have a threat, mm -hmm. sympathetic nervous system goes up. They call that fight, flight, yes. fright, freeze. Yeah. You do one of those options. Mm -hmm. Just boom, I got to get up. Cortisol goes up, the right. stress hormone and then you get away, and then I'm supposed to chillax. Mm -hmm. And then about 20 minutes later, because I didn't get eaten, the parasympathetic <laughs> comes on in, yeah. and then you relax. Here with the world, you don't ever have a chance to relax. Right. It's always on, 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 mm -hmm. right? Because then what happens is you never let it go because you mentally think about what stressed you out all damn day. Mm -hmm. Like classic, you're going to work, somebody cut you off instead of letting it go. You just talk about it all day long. Yeah. So your cortisol is up, up, up mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. right? And the biggest stress you have right now is usually in the palm of your hand, looking at the phone all day. Yeah. And usually it's the news, the world sucks, everybody is angry with each other, you, mm -hmm. you put stuff up. Then, you know, very rarely do you see people say nice things about each other on there. And this is going to be the biggest killer, not to mention the stress of the electromagnetic frequencies coming mm -hmm. from everything. Mm -hmm. To that heightened state, you never have a chance to come down. Mm -hmm. The hormones are always up. And then the reason that it affects your health is this, is that you have a constant state of tension. So let's give an example. Like if you just tensed up like this just a little bit, mm -hmm. but you stayed like that 24-7, yeah. like nonstop. Yeah. Eventually what happens is things become tight, things become stiff. You actually stop breathing well mm -hmm. and then you don't get a lot of good blood circulation mm -hmm. a lot of good oxygen delivery mm -hmm. and oxygen is life you need the oxygen in your body so you, you get excess tension that excess tension tightens the muscles up and then with the decrease in blood flow it's just a little bit not right. a lot mm -hmm. and decrease in oxygen you develop massive sensitivity in the nerves and in the muscles and everything's become super, super painful. Mm -hmm. And the movement will get you, right. right? So it's not only the muscles here, but it's the organs too, because mm -hmm. that's what's called your enteric nervous system all in through here. Mm -hmm. And they're loaded with uh, sensory fibers to talk to the brain. Right. right? It's what's called enteroreception. And then... A lot of those things communicate up and they do it primarily through a nerve called the vagus nerve mm -hmm. without getting too deep into it. But yeah. the vagus nerve, not like going to Vegas, <laughs> it's V-A-G-U-S. And the vagus nerve is actually a cranial nerve, a nerve from your brain mm -hmm. that comes down the side of your neck on both sides and it communicates with the organs of your body. They call it the wandering nerve because it's the largest nerve that travels everywhere. And that's the one that gives you that gut feeling. Like mm. if you feel emotion here or you feel like you got crushed in the gut, that's that system. And the vagus nerve, when you stimulate the vagus nerve, it's supposed to relax you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a, a parasympathetic, you know, wine and dine, right. relax. Mm -hmm. And most people don't have a well-functioning vagus nerve. It doesn't simulate very mm -hmm. well. And mm -hmm. they're finding that that nerve and what they call neurotransmitters in the gut that tell the brain how to communicate and think is really linked to high anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff like that. But you also have what's called, uh, there's a theory called the polyvagal theory. Mm -hmm. and, and that's saying that you've got... Um, Another um, vagus nerve, but it's on the dorsal side. Mm -hmm. So you got a ventral, which is in the front, mm -hmm. and you got a dorsal. The dorsal one is more primal. The dorsal one 
you know, this one in the front is supposed to you know, be the gatekeeper and go and relax you. Mm -hmm. When you're under so much stress and things are coming at you nonstop, it's almost like life's beating you down and you just want to give up. Yeah. Right. They call that the freeze where you're like, okay, you can just kill me now. Mm -hmm. Right. That means that the ventral vagus nerve is taking over mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And then that's when health just significantly suffers. And when it ties to the gut, the gut is up to, depending on the research you look at, 70 to 80 percent of your immune system strength, your ability to fight off infection. Mm -hmm. So it can be too low or it can be too high mm -hmm. or you, you over fight as mm -hmm. allergies, things like that. Right. And it connects directly, obviously, through the vagus nerve with your nervous system. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, it kind of ties back nice. There's two systems in your body that never, ever forget anything. Never. No matter how long ago, whether you remember it or not, no matter um, how short or, or how long it lasted, that your nervous system never forgets. So a lot of that stuff is non-conscious, subconscious, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Like. People say, I don't know of anything that bothered me. Well, it's pretty deep in there, but yeah. trust me, it's there. And then the other one is your immune system. Because mm -hmm. your immune system, that's where if you get exposed to something, right, it releases antibodies. Your body remembers, dude, this is bad stuff, right. man, no good. Yeah. Uh, but then it becomes like a hair trigger. Like mm -hmm. you can get, like people get pain really fast. They call that central sensitization where it doesn't take months to cause pain. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with your nervous system. Uh, like if you eat a food, bam, the nervous system goes, I mean, the immune system goes nuts mm -hmm. and you get an allergic reaction. So they right. become hypersensitive to where they're like overprotective. Right. That way. And that's why if they never forget that's why if you come in and you're 45 years old, I'm going to go all the way back in your history to 10, 20, 30 years ago mm -hmm. because I'll find it right that way because I know it never forgot. Yeah. And I can tell when I hit it mm -hmm. because I watch your physiology. I yeah. watch your body because there's these primal reflexes that happen that you don't know you're doing. You can't not do it. Yeah. And I see how you're body changes, how your eyes move, how your breathing goes, how you respond to things. I can tell quick, fast, and early whether you're freaking mm -hmm. out or not. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I find my answer. And that's when the mojo starts. That's when the mojo <laughs> starts. And people, I use the term mojo yeah. a lot. Yeah. And if people don't know, first of all, you get it from Austin Powers movies, yeah. right? Yeah. Which are freaking great. Here he's making another one, which would be <laughs> so cool. So excited, right? But it is. <laughs> but I love the word because it means magic. Honestly, and I love the word magic mm -hmm. because who doesn't love magic? Possibilities. It's possibility. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's the magic of that you can really make a difference in another human being's life. Mm -hmm. But it's also, I jokingly say, is that it's the magic of sometimes I really don't have an answer for you of why my stuff works. Yeah. It's kind of like voodoo in a way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if it, it works. works, it it works. So what would you tell people that are hearing this information, that are on the very beginning stages of figuring out what I'm doing isn't working, and they're not in your area, they don't know even who to talk to to find stuff like this, how do they start the process of finding practitioners that can help them with the eyes that you have? Because I think that's yeah. the big thing is the, the typical modern Western medicine doesn't have the eyes to see what the yeah. body is presenting the information of. Right. So how do they start that process to find someone like you that can help them? It's a good question. Part of it is realizing that you do have the power mm -hmm. and to look for answers on your own and mm -hmm. not be made to feel like because you're not a doctor that you don't know what you're talking about. It's like, mm -hmm. dude, it's my own freaking body. I'll do whatever I want to do. Yeah. Um, but to realize that it's okay yeah. if you look for answers. And I interviewed a neuroscientist recently on my podcast, and he said something that was really powerful. I love the way he said it. We kind of innately know it, but he's mm -hmm. like, if you're trying to go from A to B, and B seems really far away mm -hmm. or hopeless, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. or you're not even sure what B is. Right. He said the first step is just to do not A. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, it's like yeah. just don't do what you're already doing. Right. And then you, you'll be a go. You'll find B. Right. So that's the first thing is knowing that there is a step you can take. Mm -hmm. It's just not A. Right. And then how you go about finding a B, well, one, I'd tell people there's a couple of ways you can look. You may find yourself having to go outside into the quote unquote alternative realm, Mm -hmm. but that's getting actually much more commonplace. Right. Because people talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One, you can check out a functional medicine practitioner, functional <laughs> medicine, or a lot of them are medical doctors, osteopathic doctors, naturopathic mm-hmm. doctors, chiropractors. They have specialized training in, in a holistic approach to the body. Right. And they're very gifted at looking at systems. Mm-hmm. They do a lot of stuff with nutrition and supplementation and mix in their own discipline with it quite well. Right. I love the people who do functional medicine because they have their specialty, but they also have opened their eyes right. to. So it's, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like to say think outside the box because if you think outside the box, you usually put yourself in another box. Right. All I want you to do is make Be your open. box bigger. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then the other one is you can seek out people that do uh, Eastern medicine type of practitioners. I highly recommend things like um, uh, acupuncture. You know, that that worked really well for me personally mm-hmm. that I can speak to. You can do that way. And a, a lot of times approaching self-help things you can do for your own stress level. Mm-hmm. I've found for me practicing a lot of things like Tai Chi or uh, medical Qigong mm-hmm. type movement. Mm-hmm. Or if you're like, I don't know if I would do that. A really nice thing to do is to try to spend more time outside in nature away from uh, stress, yeah. technology, also humans. Don't like, do, don't do a, <laughs> do something different. Yeah, that's a big not a. <laughs> yeah, that's a big not a. Yeah, take People your hard- shoes off, your yeah. socks off, put your feet on the earth. It's called grounding. Mm-hmm. Um, I, one of the biggest things that I have people do is just to wake up in the morning and watch the sunrise, mm-hmm. because there's some there's some. Um, Frequencies of light, spectrums of light that only happen in the a.m. Mm-hmm. that uh, really kind of positively affect your health, mm-hmm. particularly jack up melatonin, yeah. which you can get a lot. Actually, people don't know from your eyes. Wow. But yeah, those things that you, you get back to the basics and the fundamentals. And another one of my favorite quotes is the further you get away from nature, the more lost you become. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. so i appreciate you so greatly for doing this uh it podcast fun. with me yeah I a, a lot, lot and a half hours that was a, i know <laughs> sorry okay. i told you um it's a lot of information for a beginner though i mean that this short segment is going to be a head full of stuff for so. a person to uh, start with i hope so um, but i did want to share with you one funny thing that is like the best compliment i've ever gotten and to show you what your reach is I was in a session with a client and I was going through my spiel and talking about the body and working with her and starting to say some things and do some things. She said, you know what? Um, I was watching this guy online and you sound a lot like him. I don't know what he, he was like. Stop chasing. Uh, I was like, stop chasing pain. Yeah, Dr. Perry. She's like, yeah, that's him. So that's the greatest compliment I've ever gotten as a practitioner. Aww. So that was awesome for me. But then that shows you what you're doing is you are reaching the masses with your information. So if you have not you. heard of Dr. Perry, which is fewer and fewer people, I would imagine at this point, because he teaches all over the world. Make sure you follow him on all the social media outlets. Stop Chasing Pain. Yeah. If you th- stop Chasing Pain, mm-hmm. you'll definitely find some yes. stuff and, you know. Hopefully all the good stuff's on the first couple of pages. <laughs> good, bad, and ugly. We're all those things. Got to accept it all, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming and listening to this episode of Relentless. We continue to help you strive to be healthy in your mental, emotional, and physical areas of life. Thank you, Dr. Perry. Thank you. It was fun. Awesome. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Bye, See you everybody. next time.